There we go. <laughs> We're live. Woohoo! And I can hear you. We have the same mic. Mine's up here a little bit, but all right. Well, here we go. We've got 14 people in here already. That's awesome. Thank you for being here. Yes, hello. Thank well you. Well over 100 people registered. Woo! I am so looking forward to this. So um, I was telling Michelle before we started, it's like, I don't do enough of these. I don't do them that often. But when I do, I want to bring somebody really cool in. Aww. So one of our mutual friends introduced us. And we hit it off because we both have a little bit of a Hollywood background. So Michelle Marino, is that my pronouncing it right? Marino Moreno. Marino Moreno. Okay. Like Rita. Like Rita. Um, so Michelle is in Los Angeles. She's worked in Los Angeles. She's worked in Hollywood. She's done stuff on TV. I always say like, yeah, but do you have one of these? <laughs> no. <laughs> this is I don't either. This is my dad's. Oh. He was in the TV biz. So wow. Uh, so that was for set design. But I like to keep it in the background because it, it, it's a good conversation starter. Oh my gosh, you're Emmy, you're Emmy Spawn. That's amazing. Uh, Emmy Spawn. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> so again, thanks for being here. Michelle has done uh, acting. She's done stuff with, this is impressive. I, I go on your site and I see Guy Kawasaki. And yeah, I, I contributed case studies to two of his books. That's awesome. So you know Guy, which is amazing in and of itself. Um, and you've done stuff, a lot of stuff on camera professionally. And I saw that in your bio, I don't believe this, but you said the first time you were on camera, you... You kind of froze. No, I didn't freeze. I froze so badly <laughs> that I had a, an out of body, almost an out of body experience. Oh my gosh, it was horrible. <laughs> but they invited you back. Uh, well, it was for a game show, and you'll hear the story. Uh, and it was my first time on national TV. But I, I did come back. I made a confidence comeback. <laughs> it is possible to come back from the depths. <laughs> there you go. So Michelle has been there, done that, and we are here to talk about video confidence, how to look great and sound great on camera, which is something we all desperately need these days, now more than ever. Um, I'm going to deal with some tech stuff, and I'll just let you jump in. But again, thank you so much for sharing this with us, and tell us how we can be more confident on camera. I'll let you share your slides or whatever you want. Okay. Well, am I, am I, do I need to share them? Um, to share? Once you're ready to go. Yep. Okay. So how do I do that again? You go up to the little um, screen sherry button on top. Mm -hmm. Turn video off, turn audio off. No, not that. You have to turn screen share on. Ah, there it is. Aha. I know we're using, like I, I poor Michelle, I'm like, we're using uh, Webinar Jam for the first time in a long time. So we're, we're kind of figuring it out. But ah, okay, so a question. Can we put the pictures on the top, right? Um, I think so. Hang on a second. Let me try that. Yeah, how's that? Awesome. awesome. Yes. What okay. All right, awesome. We are good to go. It is noon on the East Coast of the USA. It is 9 a.m. on your coast. It is the best coast, the West. Coast. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe not. It depends okay. on your perspective. But you know, obviously, you have the street cred and and the uh, chops to talk to us about video confidence. So it's all yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lou. Thank you for being here, everyone who is here live. Ooh, and watching the replay. Why am I qualified to speak to you today? Ever since I was a little girl, I dreamed of being on TV. But the only people on TV with a hook nose like mine were Eric Estrada and the Wicked Witch of the West. Those were my role models. But I moved to Hollywood. You know, I moved to Hollywood. I was never one to be like, you know, the odds are stacked against me. Latina, <laughs> hook knows what's, what's going to happen here. But I was never one to be deterred by bad odds. And then I got a break and I went on national TV and I got cast on the game show Hollywood Squares and I was going to be on national TV. And I thought, you know, I've already done so much stage stuff. I've done a lot of theater. I got this right. And I got to the set and there was the celebrities were in a panel like, big, mm -hmm. you know, Big Bird and Whoopi Goldberg and people, you know, that I looked up to for my whole life. And then the camera light went on and everything changed. I completely freaked 
<laughs> in panic and fear, and I froze in front of millions. And that this was back in the day. This was like circa 2001 when everybody watched network television. There wasn't like all these options. I think HBO had just started. Yeah. So it was like millions of, oh my God. millions of people, my uncles, everybody. And Whoopi Goldberg and Big Bird, <laughs> I remember them looking down at me kind of sad, with like a sad look as I unraveled. That you got, was- You got Big Bird shamed? <laughs> I got Big Bird what? Big Bird shamed. Okay, I got- Big Bird shamed. Even my uncle Julio called me and said, shit, man, I thought you were smarter than that. <laughs> okay. I went backstage where everybody was waiting for their turn to go on because they take like 20 of these shows in a day, right? Oh, my God, yeah. It, when I went back there, everybody parted like the Red Sea. Nobody even wanted to get near me. <laughs> okay, so this is my whole dream, right? I ugly cried. For like a year. And then I went back into the mouth of the lion and I said, I'm going to find mentors. I'm going to, and they said, everybody said, you got to go on camera. You got to take ca classes where they put you on camera. I went on hundreds of auditions. I clawed my way back. I took every Hollywood hard knock. I applied everything that my coaches told me to do. And four years later, I went from freak out to freedom on camera. I appeared on hit shows starting mm. in 2006 on shows like Boston Legal, Parenthood, The Shield with celebrities like doing scenes with Dak Shepard and Michael Chitlis oh, wow. and, and William Shatner. I went from freak outs to freedom. These are some of the shows and networks that I have mm. been on. I went on the Spanish version of Cheaters called Secretos. <laughs> and after, after, after I fought a 17 year old wearing lingerie because she was sleeping with my husband, uh, <laughs> my, my gardener like assistant was out in the back and he was like, <laughs> staring me down because he saw that episode of Secretos and was like, I thought she was married to the other guy. Okay, so this was my life. And then my husband was like, Moreno, you got to make more than $12,000 a year. <laughs> and I was like, I do? You married me when I was an actress. And he was like, you got to. And so that's why I became a video confidence expert. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been on all these shows and I've helped hundreds of entrepreneurs and right now I'm going to help are you, so who's ready? Put it in the chat. Are you ready? Are you ready to learn to be confident from somebody who failed so miserably ready. and came back? Are you ready? Is, is anybody say yes? Did anybody say yes? Oh, so you're saying if you can do it, we can do it. Is that possible? No, it is so possible. I am here to tell you. So let's learn. No, seriously, it is so possible. Can you imagine feeling like that and then going back? Mm. But it was my dream. So I had to. So today I'm going to teach you how to look amazing and sound brilliant. I'm going to teach you some tactics used by Olympians on how to tame your nerves, what to do with them and use them to your advantage, plus how to attract clients with that emotional connection so that you can crush it in business and get your gerbil the habit trail of his dreams. <laughs> That, oh my God, I love it that Lou is laughing at my jokes. That's what life is all about, getting in trouble to have a chat. <laughs> Isn't that your why? Okay. Well, it has to do with Rocco the pug and, and having like 15 pugs and strolling the streets of Italy with my dogs. But we'll, Have you ever done that? Get there. Not only with one pug, but I want like 10. Okay, well, in your mind, you can have 10. Okay. And just want <laughs> the one, and I think that's getting pretty close. <laughs> But let's talk about in the chat. Please put in the chat, folks. Why do we dislike the way we look on camera? Can anybody put in the chat an answer or a, a guess? Yeah. Why do you think we dislike the way we look? I'll check the chat. There's a little teeny delay, so we may have to. Oh, there is. Okay. From the time, but uh, I know it's like. I mean, I can speak from while we wait for the responses. From my standpoint, it's like the first time you hear yourself on a tape recorder or, or your sound. It's like, is that me? Yeah. Ashton thinks he's funny looking. No. Oh, <laughs> don't we all criticize ourselves? I think I got um, one time in uh, when I was doing my first communion class, 
a kid called me a squirrel. He said I look like a squirrel. And when I was 10, 8 years old, that oh. stayed with me all these years. I'm like, oh man, I look like a squirrel. Are so mean and also hilarious. I'm sorry, Lee, but that's hilarious. <laughs> so Neil right. thinks she looks fatter. Peter is hyper judgmental. A lot uh, of people think they look fat. I, 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 and people just don't like the way they look. You know why? Because images are digitally enhanced across the internet. We have all these influencers who already start out beautiful and then they know their angle and they know how to light themselves and put the makeup on and then they look even more beautiful. And now we have to live up to these impossible beauty standards. Mm -hmm. Plus we're used to the way we look in a mirror and on camera you, you get a little weight added. It's tough out there. So let's learn how to look amazing. First of all, you always want to have your face well lit. Now, some people say face evenly lit. Other people say one side shadow, one side lit has kind of got like a film noir look and it can be dramatic. I say make it evenly lit unless you really know what you're doing. So just put some light on your face. The best light is natural light coming in through a window. So if you can set yourself up where you're facing a window and the camera's facing you and the, and the window's out there, great. But if not, then just, you know, put on a little more makeup than usual if you're a woman and, and grab a desk lamp that has a frosted bulb and a dimmer on it. Mm -hmm. Raise your camera lens to eye level. I mean, right now mine is above eye level and pointed down. So just at least to eye level or above. And one thing that you want to do to make sure that your image isn't cloudy mm. uh, is to clean your lens with an eyeglasses cloth. But you can also, if you want that filtered look, just take a little bit of Vaseline, put it over the lens. <laughs> Oh. Isn't that what they used to do in the old days? I yes. can't, don't put the Vaseline on. But that is, but that is a tip if you really want that filter. That's good to know, though, because a lot of times people say, oh, I need such such a light. I'm like, you just need light, daylight. You just need some light, right? Uh, and you want to make sure that your face is prominent in the frame. You know, you don't want to be like, <laughs> like this. I mean, just show your face. And the reason is that people connect to baby animals, to humans, and that's why a lot of commercials will start out like with a big close up on somebody's face. And that's because we're emotionally trained to respond, like our, our bodies will respond to a face. So, you know, get it in there. And if you get so close that you have big features that start to get a little distorted, then just sit back a little. Find that perfect spot where you look the best that you can and avoid the newbie gap, which is tons of space between the top of your head and the top of frame. I see that mistake made all the time. And you want to avoid that. No more newbie gap. Just close the gap, right? So clean up your background so you don't look like a disorganized hot mess and keep your visuals on brand, right? Right, Lou? Absolutely. Even if you have to have a $17 fake vinyl background tacked up to your wall. See how amazing he looks for just $17. So we also want to do this. We want to wear colors that flatter us. If you put your clothes, just go to your closet and start putting your clothes under your face. If there's a color that makes you look washed out, don't wear it. You don't want to look like this when you go on camera. You want to look like the first one. She Look at that color, how it makes her just pop. Her skin is like from the gods, right? Mm -hmm. And the orange makes her look terrible. And that's on purpose. Also the makeup that they put on her. But you're going to know which colors wash you out when you do the camera test, just go in front of a camera and just start putting the colors underneath your neck and you'll know. You also wanna wear form fitting clothes. Although I am breaking that rule today, this is quite the bulky jacket, but it's because my hair is big and I'm trying to wear the jewelry and make that stand <laughs> out. So, but if you're worried about looking bigger, because I'm small on top, but if you're big on top, you definitely wanna wear plain, no patterns and just something form fitting, you know? Um, if you wear baggy clothes, then the camera, your, people watching you will just imagine that you just keep going that wide. <laughs> so you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that it's slim. Uh, I'm only showing this much, so it's okay. And I'm small on top, so it's okay if I make myself look bigger than I really am. But if you're the opposite and you're top heavy, then you want to wear something form fitting and no patterns. Okay. So those are the wardrobe do's and don'ts, but also test your patterns tight patterns can flicker and vibrate like this and you don't want that to happen. So just, you know, avoid houndstooth or if when in doubt, just go on the camera and see, does this vibrate or not? Have you ever had a vibrating shirt, Lou? Yes, it's not fun. <laughs> because what happens? It's like, look people, at it. 
People oh, watch your shirt instead of you. Yeah, I mean, and it's funny because even professionals, I've seen folks on, on CNN and national networks that make that mistake. Um, hopefully you only have to make it once, but yeah, because you see, and it's it's like looking at some kind of, you know, crazy circus mirror or something. <laughs> yeah, it's very distracting. And you don't want people to be, oh my gosh, look at his shirt vibrating the whole time. You want them to be able to listen to your words and your ideas, right? And of course, you want to pop from your background. So if you have a white background, don't wear white. If you have gray, don't wear gray. You know, just wear something that contrasts with your background so that you actually pop. Um, and now we're going to go on to, Lou, you said you dislike the way you sound. Mm -hmm. Does anybody know why that is? It's funny because a lot of other folks said that, that they, their voice sounds yucky. <laughs> My. Yeah. Oh, is that what they said in the chat? <laughs> yeah. Yucky voice. It's a thing. Does anybody know why? Anyone Has anybody popped up on Because we're hearing our voice with our own ears. Correct. We're used to hearing our voice as sound traveling away from us from our own ears, from inside our head. But mm -hmm. when the sound is coming toward us, it sounds totally different from external. And so what you gotta do is you're just gonna sound brilliant all the time. And you're going to really get your voice warmed uh, up before you go on camera. And know that tension in the neck area can cause restriction. And what you want is you want very relaxed neck area because that will create the uh, air, the uh, allow the air to flow and mm -hmm. the resonance to flow. So for that more authoritative, confident sound, you're going to want to do a physical warm up, whether that's dancing around the room to your favorite song, which might get you in that upbeat kind of feeling. Um, Push-ups, prancer size for those of you who are around in the late 80s, as I was, <laughs> she, would, she would gallop like a horse. <laughs> and she had a camel toe. It was sheer entertainment. <laughs> okay, and so physical warm-up is important, okay? So do the physical warm-up. And then to ensure that your neck and shoulders are relaxed, I want you to sit up straight right now, and I want you to do this with me, okay? I want you to do the shoulder scrunch. Okay, you can do it with me, Lou. Ready? Breathe in and scrunch up everything, including your shoulders and your face. This is also face warm up. Scrunch everything up and, and breathe in, breathe in, breathe in until you can't take in any more air. <sighs> and then just release everything. Okay, one more time, everybody. Breathe in, scrunch. You know, you're mad. Oh, the day. Oh, it's so frustrating. I hate it. Oh, my gosh. When am I going to get my next sale? I'm not going to make my rent. Oh, my God. Okay. That's what you're going to uh. do. Okay. That's the shoulder scrunch. And that will help you make sure that this is just sort of relaxed and you can feel in your body. Where is it? Is there any tension left? If so, scrunch it up or tighten it and then relax. Okay. And then you're going to sit up straight. Always sit up straight when you're speaking for a long period of time because you want that tall spine and, and you want your jaw just to be relaxed. If you don't want your neck like this, mm -hmm. your chin up too much, because that doesn't look good on camera, but also you just wanna make sure that this is totally relaxed. Like if you were to hit your head, it would just kind of mm -hmm. pop, right? So let's learn a couple of vocalize. This is called the siren. You're good. I'll do it first. You breathe in. So you start high, you go down low, and then you go back up. Ready? Everybody breathe in. Lou, do it with me. Breathe in high. That's it. The dog's looking at me funny, though. <laughs> You guys would be like, what's going on? Okay. The raspberry. Babies do it, so can you. You breathe in. I'll do it first. I'm trying not to spit on my computer. Okay, so move your head away from the computer because otherwise you'll get spit on it. Okay, and you breathe in. Okay, and when everything is relaxed, the tongue will vibrate. Okay. How did you do, Lou? Let me see your rest. <laughs> I don't know if this is the right time to ask, or maybe you're gonna address it. So if I'm jumping ahead, just sure, sure quiet but one of the problems i have when i'm doing webinars is like serious dry mouth like i just get like and my lips yeah. start smacking 
Yeah. First thing you want to do for tongue smacking sounds is to eat green apples. I'm not addressing that, but that's a good question. Green mm -hmm. apples takes away the smack sound. And you have to learn to breathe through your nose more often than you breathe through your mouth. Because if I don't know what your habits are, but the reason we get so dry is sometimes it can be nerves. It happens to me when I get nervous. But the other thing is you're not breathing through your nose, which mm -hmm. will prevent the dry throat. So just make sure that you really practice. I know like when I dance and I get into the dance, the choreography part, I hold my breath and I don't know why I do that. It's terrible, mm -hmm. right? And we just get into these habits. So just really make sure that, pay, start to pay attention. Are you breathing through your mouth or through your nose? And start really breathing only through your nose. That is the number one way to dry your mouth out is to always be mouth breathing. Cool. Uh, so remember, mm -hmm. just speak with that tall spine and jaw. But Michelle, I'm so freaked out by going on the camera. Let me tell you a subconscious reason that you may be having that causes resistance. Sure, it can be when your uncle told you that is the stupidest dance when you like were in third grade and jumping around the room, which caused you to shrink in the corner forever. I'm not going to lie. The things that people say to us can really cause us to have those, I'm not good enough. Okay, but let's just say... You know, you've gone through years of therapy and you're like, I know that's not what it is. I've really, really developed my own personal, you know, confidence. And it's not that the camera is still freaking me out. I can speak. A lot of people say I can speak in front of a room. I no problem. I can do this, but I get petrified on camera. Well, let me tell you why. Possibly. It's possible that when we really fear the camera, it goes back to our days as pack animals. And when we were separated from the group and we were out there alone, and all the little gazelles have moved on and we're the baby gazelle left behind. Well, guess what? We're going to die because we're going get to get eaten by the saber-toothed tiger that can now see us because we're so visible. And we think that's what's going to happen when we go on camera. And that's why I had that out-of-body experience that mm -hmm. I couldn't control. Our body goes into a flight or fight mechanism because we fear the saber-toothed tiger out on the plane mm -hmm. alone in front of all those eyeballs. But today, fast forward, we fear the cyber-toothed tiger known as internet trolls. Mm -hmm. We fear that judgment. So what are your top fears when you go on camera? Okay, so we asked that in the beginning, how I'm going to mm -hmm. look. We hate thinking about ourselves and how we look on the camera. Mm -hmm. so what you have to do is stop thinking about that and you're going to focus on something else, which I'll give you that focus a bit later in this broadcast. But for now, you just need to understand what the mechanics of this fear is. It's possible that you're suffering from this subconscious fear. I had a client who literally, she got up, she was opening a bar in front of the mayor of Los Angeles and they're like, speak, it was her bar. And she went up to the thing and then she stopped and she turned around and she ran from her own bar out the door. <laughs> literally ran out the door. She literally ran. I mean, it's funny now, but she was crying when she came to me. And I was kind of like trying not to laugh when she told me that story because I'm a coach, right? So I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be understanding. But I was like, no, she did not run. Out of I just bar. put up the little um, poll that, that is a different way of asking your same question. What scares you most when it comes to being on camera? How I'll look. Oh, my gosh. Mm. The techie stuff. Okay, I am the worst techie person. I get so nervous when I go on these things that I'm going to screw it up. I'm like performance, no problem. Tech, I'm the worst. So I understand that fear completely that I'll sound foolish. Sounds mm -hmm. like most of them is only one person. So uh, it's it's how I'll look is 75. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So let's talk about confidence crisis. Whenever you try anything new, you're going to say to yourself on camera anyway, get a confidence crisis on camera. I'm going to look like a troll mm -hmm. or I look like a troll. You think you look like a troll. I sound like an idiot. Why am I so nasal? What do I have to say that's of any value? They're going to figure out that I'm not really an expert. Fill in the blank, right? So I am afraid of tech. Personally, that's my struggle. That's my problem. That's my issue that I've had to overcome. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about this song for a moment also known as a pattern disruptive for those of you who know about uh -huh. presentations. It's time to tame your inner critic. You're going to look at your inner critic and you're going to say, I know that I look terrible, but right now 
I know. Okay, you're right. I look like shit, but you need to go in the back seat for the duration of this recording or live stream or webinar or whatever the case may be, meeting, virtual meeting. And you're just going to go in the back seat because if you don't, you're going to take away from what I need to be focused on, which is the needs of my clients. Guess what? The needs of my clients or my audience or my followers are more important than my ego, which is you. Okay, so you in the back seat, whoosh, and you can't hear her anymore. She's like, meow, meow, and you like close it. Boom. Can I put them in the trunk because I'm Italian and I like? To- <laughs> oh, good lord! Just don't <laughs> dismember the inner critic. Okay. Because you want you want him or her to come back. Is yours a man or a woman? Your inner a man. Got to put him in the man. trunk. Okay, don't dismember him. Okay. <laughs> God, did you, did you guys see Borat when he sings that song, Fauci, what we going to do? Chop him up like the Saudis do. Okay. <laughs> the funniest thing I've ever heard. Okay. Tame your inner critic. It's time to make a video. Put your inner critic in the back seat behind plexiglass so she can't make a peep. She can come along for the ride, but she can't drive. And you cannot listen to her. She can come out when the shoot is over because there's a time when you need her by your side. And that's the time to watch the replay because she's a master. She'll tell you faster how to improve. Just ask her. She might drive you cray cray, but that's okay, Kay. Because when you tame her, you'll have a hella big digital payday. Okay, tame your inner critic for the day. Love her. And then send her on her way. Bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye. (laughs) That is awesome. That was worth the price of admission alone. Was it? Thank you, Lou. I'm so (laughs) glad that you feel that way. So now we also fear judgment from girls like these. I'm not going to lie. I was a mean girl. I had mean girls mean on me. I mean, mean girls are brutal, okay? There's nothing like uh, someone who hasn't fully formed their prefrontal cortex, (laughs) who is also really pretty and well-liked for reasons that she doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. The vitriol and hate. I mean, I think it may only be matched by West Side Moms in L.A. (laughs) (laughs) These are certain characters in our lives that ruin it for the rest of us, right? I mean, it's horrible. So what you're going to do is you're going to say, I need to be judged. I need to be visible for my business. In the name of growth and personal growth, I'm just going to have to be judged, okay? But in order to know what to do with those nerves that come up, do what Olympians do. They transform whatever emotions arise in their body to enhance their performance. They use their nerves like a friend, like a trusted friend that shows up before every race. Why? Because nerves indicate that you care. Mm-hmm. If you view those nerves as helpful, they actually help you as Kelly McGonigal's TED Talk, How to Make Stress Your Friend, describes and the research that she came up with. And your pounding heart and shaking hands, while it, back in the day, in prehistoric days, was to help us run from the saber-toothed tiger, well, now you're going to use those nerves for more energy and brain power. And here's how. You are going to roll... <laughs> your shoulders back. And if you're going to carry tension, make sure it's not here. You're going to do your scrunch, right? And you're going to roll those shoulders back because anyone who has expansive wide body language is perceived as more confident. You're going to kind of like lean forward, right? So even if I'm scared out of my mind, suddenly I just look like somebody who's ready, right? And you're going to get that warmth, confident feeling you know, by just holding that smile for a full minute before you hit record or think of something funny that makes you laugh or puts you in that warm, inviting mode, right? And then have that wide body language and then just use the extra energy. Like if your hands are like this and you're like, today I'm just going to use it to talk with my hands and then the rest of the time I'll just put it down here so nobody can see that they're shaking. And instead you're going to channel that into clear, loud talking points. Use it for extra emphasis or to have a little bit more volume in your voice is to have, or to have more enthusiasm. And you're going to really hold that smile for a full minute before you hit record to have the inner biology of happiness coursing through your brain. That's your a good brain. one. Mark, um, my friend Mark says he has trouble smiling on camera. You just have to force yourself to. Well, you know, you, you can smile for the first, for a whole minute before you hit record. Mm-hmm. So just hold it for a full minute. And what it does is it starts to, your body will trigger some of the same hormones Mm -hmm. 
because that's what the body does. It gets these signals like, oh, Michelle is smiling. And it releases just a little bit of those chemicals mm. to create the inner body biology of happiness. So it'll just help combat. And then you're going to mentally use the nerves at, to your advantage so that you view the stress as helpful. And what happens is when people view the stress of, as helpful, whether it's more helpful or not, they start to believe that and they perform better. So it's almost like you're tricking your mind and your body into doing a better job. And uh, finally, for those of you who have a favorite video, like I had a client and he um, he has a mental condition where he looks kind of angry on camera. And so I said, what is the funniest thing ever? And he's like, the funniest thing ever is in South Park when one of the little kids has to sing Oh, Holy Night or something like that. And, and they cattle prodded the whole song and he's like it's look like the funniest thing i've ever seen and and as soon as he started talking about it mm -hmm. his whole face changed and i was like you need to think in the, the start of your video in the middle of your video and at the end of your video about what who is getting cattle prodded whatever Cotman. the south park kid Cotman was yeah Cotman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Carmine, what's his name? Cartman. Eric Cartman, I think. It okay, is. Eric. Wait. I know way too much about South Park than I, more than I should. But anyway. Okay, you need to think of that episode where he's getting catapulted during All Holy Night. <laughs> and he's like, his face changed, right? You need to do the same thing. These are called emotional triggers. And in acting, we have a whole toolbox filled with emotional triggers. Why? Because if we go on set, and let's say the scene is your best friend dies, right? And I've prepared it at home, and there's no pre nothing and you get there and it's like, you got to shoot it now, especially if it's low budget, they don't even give you a rehearsal, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got to shoot it and you're crying because your best friend died because you're assuming that's the choice the director wants you to make because that's what got you the job in the first place when you did your audition. Well, it turns out that the director is doing two takes on multiple endings and they're going to test it in the studio, which ending is happier or which uh, ending the audience mm -hmm. likes better. Or maybe he just wants a different take just because he's a director. Well, guess what? Now you have to do it again and you have to take his direction. And he says to you, now you're happy that your friend died. OK, go. <laughs> so you have to literally go from crying to being happy that your friend died. So we have triggers that we have in a toolbox, or at least the ones working professionals all do this. I don't know about everybody, but I, I know a lot of working professionals who do this. And they have a whole basket full of emotions that you can trigger to, in order to put yourself in that space, right? So that's what you're going to do. Now let's talk about, is, is that clear? Yeah, that makes sense. All right, how are we doing on time? Good. Okay, good. Okay, now let's talk about how you connect emotionally, right? If you want people to do something, take your call to action. What motivates an action? What, what really motivates people to take an action? Does anybody mm. know any guesses? Let me see if there's anything in the chat. I would imagine it's that whole what's in it for me. Yes. Thing, you know? Yes. And behind that what's in it for me is that emotional connection to you. Sure, they may be convinced by case studies. And there's some people and there's a percentage of the population that is really uh, makes decisions on things like logic, proof, social proof, mm -hmm. comparison shopping. And there is a percentage of people who think that way. And if that is your audience and you know them, then continue to use those tactics. However, for most people, they need to be emotionally moved. Some Something about you they have to like or trust or mm -hmm. or just trust that, that you're the one, right? And that's really the emotional connection they have with you. So if they don't feel any connection, they're not even going to remember what you said, honestly. And... You're like the baby panda of your brand, right? Mm -hmm. Oh. See how we all look at that and we go, oh, it's so cute, right? It's because this panda makes us feel something, mm -hmm. right? And some people have it easy. I had this woman who did a challenge and she actually looked just like a baby panda. <laughs> but she was talking about finance and she was shooting from her bedroom. Uh, and I was like, girl, this is not on brand. You look like a panda. She looked like she was 18. I was mm -hmm. like, get a blazer on and get out of the bedroom. Like, you still have to be on brand. But you have to be liked and trusted with that emotional 
connection. I repeat, you really, people are used to these screens. We're used to Netflix and we're used to binge watching on YouTube cat videos. And so when you don't make that emotional connection on camera, people will tune out to go watch the kittens on the Roomba. So your biggest competition is not Susie Q or Jack from your space. It's kittens and the Tiger King. The Tiger King. <laughs> These are your competitors. Oh. So the biggest mistake, don't make it, is when somebody is watching their own selfie video the whole time. Like if I want to watch myself, I have to look over there because I have a two screens happening right now. So if I really want to watch to see what I'm, what's going on with me, I need to look over here. But I don't want to do that the whole time. Maybe mm -hmm. for some of the time it's appropriate because let's say you have to take somebody in. If you're on a video conference call, you have to look at them in order to receive their body language, to understand what's happening with them, to check in. But when you have an emotional point to make or something important to say to them, or if you're talking for a long time, you got to connect your eyes to the lens. And it's so easy to want to watch yourself. I know what that's like. But you, when you do that, if I'm like this the entire webinar, mm -hmm. it just kind of cuts you off emotionally from me. But if in those important moments when I have something important to say and I just look into that lens and I, and I really think of that ideal client, let me just think of somebody who's just like desperate in a pathetic situation who really needs my help. Okay, I got somebody, right? Mm -hmm. I can think of my client. And I'm like, please don't make that mistake right? Because I'm really connected to her and I really care about her. And now I'm focused on her, right? So as much as you can, just connect those eyes to the lens and imagine that you're speaking to someone who really brings out the best in you, who really inspires you. If you don't have that favorite client, then just pick a best friend who you just imagine is in pain and needs whatever you're about to say on the video or the live and make it all about them. And this takes the focus off of you. That's awesome. If you need to mark the lens, put a post-it, put your client or bestie with a hole, just cut the hole and put it right over the lens. If you have to, if, if this will serve as a constant reminder, look over here, make it about Janice, make it about Jack. That's great. Right? So do that. And you just want also for that true emotional connection. Like it's easy for me right now to make that connection because Lou is with me here on this. So I just put Lou and I'll be like, Lou, how am I doing? Lou, how am I doing? How am I doing? I have a uh, little post-it arrow right next to the camera because I constantly have to be reminded to watch the camera and not the screen or the person on screen who's down there. It's right. so difficult. But if you would put those little reminders, a smiley face, whatever arrow, he's got the arrow, whatever it takes, right? How am I doing, though, Lou, in terms of like this presentation? Awesome. I love this stuff. This is great. And I, oh. I know my folks love it as well. Quick question, because I noticed when you went to connect, you took your glasses off. Is that any kind of an inhibitor in terms of connecting, or you just want folks to see the, as much of your eyes as possible? It was, it was just innate drama because I'm a drama queen. Ooh, okay. <laughs> but I think, you know, it's important to be who you are on camera. Mm -hmm. uh, is like if you're constantly making videos, right, and you're trying to attract your ideal clients and you never wear your glasses, and then you show up to the first client meeting mm -hmm. and you wear glasses, they're going to feel duped. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the hands. Like if you're a real hand talker and in all your videos, you're like this. And then suddenly, like, first of all, people trust people more if they show their hands. So it's always a good idea mm -hmm. if you're a hand talker cool. to show your hands because gestures actually help people retain information, especially if you're horrible with your hands. If you're like, if you're like Bernie Sanders and <laughs> uh, the entire time he's mm -hmm. pointing at you and it's the same gesture. Well then maybe <laughs> we'll just keep the hands in the lap. But if you, if you're like Italian or you talk with your hands, show the hands, don't try mm -hmm. to hide them because people trust people more when they, don't hide things. And if you show up on the client meeting and you're wearing glasses and you never wear them in your videos, there's going to be some kind of like, hmm, did this person dupe me? Are they not who they say they are? <laughs> so you want to be the same person when you're serving clients as you are on camera. So you want to be the same off camera as you are on camera. But since everything is happening on camera today, you want to be the same when you serve clients as you are in your videos to attract clients. Perfect. Okay. Good stuff. So let's talk about how you be a friend. 
the goal is to like, when you're talking on video, is just be a friend in a cafe. That's, that's the gold standard. Mm-hmm. And that means it's, it's familiar. You know how in copywriting they say, be familiar with the person like you know them? Mm-hmm. That's kind of the same thing on camera. It's like we're already friends. I've never met you before, but you're already my friend. Does that make sense? It's kind of an intimate thing. Mm-hmm. And for introverts, don't imagine that it's thousands of eyes. Just imagine you're just talking to one person and really force yourself to think about the situation from the viewer's point of view. Viewers, they they just, Facebook just deleted its Facebook watch party. Mm-hmm. And the reason is most people are just watching by themselves. Right. If they want to have a group over, it's because it's a party and they're not really going to watch a video. Very few watch parties happen with groups online, right? Yep. It's mostly individual. So really this is, don't think of it as a one-to-many platform. It really is a one-to-one conversation. Mm-hmm. And talk to that, whoops, I keep hitting my mic. I was told <laughs> that I keep hitting my mic because I get like so excited, but I want it to be close enough so that you can hear me. Uh, your favorite client, team member, audience member, bestie, whoever brings out the best in you. And then just have conversations with those people. Like in real life, if you if you have somebody you can talk to in real life, but if you're like me and you're stuck with your spouse, he does not bring <laughs> out the best in me. I am not going to replicate the, the conversations that I have with my spouse when I'm talking to you, okay? But just find someone who really brings out the best in you and then just recreate that when you go on camera. So hit record, here's a daily exercise if you want to improve and just look into the lens and just, Tell somebody you love something, whether it's good morning, I hope Mm -hmm. you're doing okay, or I'm so excited, or something you're kind of enthusiastic or positive about, right? And then watch it back and say to yourself, how can I improve for next time? Nice. So today you've learned. You are enough. Somebody asked in the beginning, can I really overcome these fears? And I promise you, there has never been a single client that I've had who's ever walked in my door fearful I will not go on camera. Michelle, help me. I had a client who ran out the door. If you saw her on camera now, you would never believe that she ran from that speech. You would never believe it. And the reason is you can become confident on camera. I promise you. Uh, at least none of my clients have, have ever failed to make that transition. Uh, but, you know, and, and that's not to say that I'm not going to have a future client who doesn't make that transition. But so far, since 2016, there mm-hmm. has not been a single person that I have not been able to transform. And I think it's because they come to me ready to do it. They have made the decision that they're going to overcome it. They don't believe they can, but they've put money behind overcoming it, which means they're going to do it. Otherwise, they're not going to they're going to lose their money. Right. Well, actually, I offer I'm going to be a guarantee, guarantee, but nobody's ever <laughs> taken me up on it. But the point is. They're ready, okay? So just appear confident using the tips that you learned today so that your trolls don't attack you Mm -hmm. because trolls do not attack confident people. I have never been attacked online once. However, my site has been attacked, which means whoever doesn't like me is is still causing a lot of damage, (laughs) but they're just not going to do it to my face because they Mm -hmm. know I'm confident and I'll rip them a new one. But Mm -hmm. I'm I'm getting, actually, I got attacked my site. Like some, my web guy told me this was an intentional attack by somebody who doesn't like you. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, great. You know what I mean? So it can happen, folks. But even if it does, who cares? These are not your people. You have got to be judged online today if you want to scale your reach if you want to cont- if you have enough clients if you're happy the way you are if you don't need to go on camera don't continue what you're doing <laughs> however because of the rona business is being conducted virtually forevermore and it's not going to go back mm-hmm. so that means we all have to be camera ready so if you want to build your authority and scale your reach and impact at your expert Best. I invite you to my on camera authority five day challenge. It's only $147. And for five days, you're going to get bite sized lessons. I give you my best. I don't waste your time. I hate trainings where they talk about why this is so important and they mm-hmm. bring on the guy who's, I mean, it's like, didn't we already go through all that? And didn't I already, let's get to the meat people. I start with the meat. I don't waste your time. So these lessons are under 10 minutes a day. 
You get a challenge a day that you post in my private Facebook group. Um, or it's an option, optional. Mm-hmm. You don't have to post them. You can just make them for yourself. Yep. And in those lessons, you learn to capture people's attention. You learn to amplify your authority on camera. And this will help you grow your audience, your business, and your brand awareness. Why? Because I have a proven framework. I have transformed hundreds of business leaders time and again. And I also have 14 plus years in Hollywood and the secrets that I bring with me. And so the reason this is such a good deal is that it not only includes the challenge lessons that you watch on video, but the fourth video you make, which is the expert video, which is you actually giving advice on camera, I will review that video or any three minutes of a video that you create. I will watch three minutes of any video you want me to review. And I will give you not only the exact steps to improve your performance, but I will tell you what I believe, and I could be wrong, but what I believe is your on-camera superpower. Because everybody, I mean, everybody has an on-camera superpower. So if you want that, Luke. That's awesome. You can go to, uh, let me put the link in the comments. I meant to make a shorter link, but this will work. Okay, uh, in 46 minutes. Whew. Whew. All right. Breathe through the nose, breathe through the nose. There's the link. Katra Page Challenge 2021. I thought I had a shorter link, but I can't seem to track it down. But this will definitely get you there and work. Oh, go right to this site. And uh, a couple of other things. First of all, you kind of, um, sort of touched upon and glossed over like, okay, we're not going back anytime soon. This is the way we have to do business now. Yeah. I was on a, a conference yesterday about live conferences and every single one of the speakers said, at best, we're going to go back to some kind of a hybrid where most of the event is online or virtual. So if you speak from the stage, if you get your business from networking, if you get your business from referrals and events, this is it. I mean, you've got to step it up and you've got to be good. And it's so important. So I love the, this course. I was looking at it. It's amazing. It does all the right things. And because I believe in it and Michelle so much, I will add to this, to all the stuff that you're getting, from Michelle, I'll add a uh, one-on-one technical review as well. So if you say, what light should I use? Or is this light positioned properly? Or do I look too dark? I'll, for anybody who participates in this program, I'll add my technical uh, one-on-one as well. Oh, that is so great. Uh, I'm telling you, this is, I mean, the fact that you're going to be pushed to make the videos, the fact mm-hmm. that you have a private Facebook group, a secret place to go live or post your videos, which is optional. But mm-hmm. the fact that you get both of our eyeballs on your video is, I mean, I think that's a great deal. Yeah, uh, I would that's awesome. Because that. you'll be able to give them, you know, uh, give everybody the real on-camera performance and yeah. performance. And I can kind of say, like, your mic's too far away. <laughs> I'll have a little thing. <laughs> the same exact mic, by the way, the blue Yeti Nano. Oh, my gosh. Gold edition. Yeah. So this is really a, an amazing program. Um, now, tell folks what happens. They go through every – is it self-paced, or do they have to do it in five days? Or uh, It's it's self-paced, but I ask that you make the – review with me happen by the end of the year. So, Mm -hmm. but, but it's better to do this earlier than later because of what Lou just said, there's no going back. And Mm -hmm. the sooner you're great on camera, the sooner you'll be able to build your brand and outdo your competition because your competition is not far behind. Some of them may already be amazing on camera. So if you're not, and you say to yourself, I really need to be my expert best on camera because everything is being done online now. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be caught at a disadvantage because if you want to just start at a level playing field at this point, right? you have to check that you're doing it right. And I want to throw $147 at checking to make sure that I've got this down, checking to make sure that my brand comes across as professional, then, then, then it's a no brainer. If you have mm-hmm. those concerns and if you're nervous about it, to have both of us 
take a look and give our opinions is amazing. I, mm -hmm. Thank you, Lou, for that bonus. Thank you. This is really awesome stuff. I'm just going to go back to the chat just to see if there are any. Uh, yes, there will be a replay, so don't worry about that. Um, if you can't see the link, I'll send it to you with the recording afterwards. Uh, it may Somebody said the link was behind the poll, but I'll post it again. And if there are any questions, feel free to put them in the chat right now, and we'll do our best to answer it. But again, I want to say this is – and some people even mm -hmm. said, like, well, why are you having Michelle on? Don't you teach on-camera stuff? I'm like, I was not – you know, an actor, an actress in Hollywood who had real life on camera television experience. I don't do this every day. This is what you do every day. I can help you with the tech part, but I, that's why I brought in Michelle because it's so important. We need to have an absolute expert tell us what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. And I especially loved what you said about your uh, superpower, finding your online superpower. Cause I would say like, Oh, I'm an introvert. I don't like being on camera. I think that's my superpower. I'm just like, I'm an introvert, yes. <laughs> you know? Totally your superpower. Like there's going to be people who pe be people who bond with me. I have a specific style. I'm a little in your face. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And there's other kind of people that are going to say, Lou is a little bit more my speed that Michelle, eh, don't really like her. Right. And so everybody has a, a place. Yep. And Lou, you have a very relaxed, like, Hey, yeah, like, uh, yeah, I'll get that in the chat for you. And and for some of, people, I take that's a lot what of, they uh, need. Muscle relaxes every morning just to know. <laughs> <laughs> I know whatever gets you through the day, Lou. Yeah. Whatever, whatever we all are just doing the best we can. <laughs> mm -hmm. But again, this is it. I mean, you know, if you speak from the stage, if you do networking events, you have your little teeny Zoom picture on camera or your really big Zoom yeah. picture when you're on camera presenting. And this is the way we're going to be doing business. This is why I wanted Michelle to come and talk to us. This is why you definitely need her course. So and the, the reason that one, let me just say one thing sure. about that. The reason this is such a good value is because that you get the feedback customized to you. Mm -hmm. What I look mm -hmm. and I see Jane, she is doing one thing. And then I come over here. I, I just had a client uh, who has cerebral palsy mm -hmm. and his exercises are a completely different animal because I have to give him facial relax uh, mm -hmm. and engagement exercises in order to combat his physical disability, right? Mm -hmm. And so I can say to him, okay, you're going to do this scrunch face. You're going to do this every day. Whereas this guy over here, maybe he just speaks in a monotone. So I have to prescribe to him, okay, what you're going to do is you're going to need to increase the number of notes you use because you're putting us to sleep with your monotone. So this is how you're going to change. And then I guess prescribe something to him that's completely different. So I'm kind of like a performance doctor mm -hmm. who could look at your specific quirks and your specific talents and tell you what you're great at so that you feel more confident, but also help you deal with any challenges you know some people they have nervous tics some people they have a stutter i li you know like one guy is like okay this is how you're going to deal with your stutter and this is what you're going to mm -hmm. do to overcome it and if you go on my linkedin on linkedin and you'll see that he's like oh my god michelle you ended my on-camera <laughs> stutter he's like you don't understand what this means in my life because he was trying to do you know youtubes to talk about his business yeah it's so, you. so the, the, this customized angle where you get to work with me and then the customization with lou who not only knows tech stuff but he knows social media strategy he's been around the block he knows his stuff priceless Absolutely. Yes. I mean, you really would have to like if somebody just came to me and said, can you look at my whole image and uh, can advise me on the lighting and the tech and the mic and all that? I'm like, yeah, for 300 bucks, I can. But you get it with this for free. Yeah. So I, I'm excited. So and I'm also happy to take uh, questions. Yeah, we have a, a question from Mark and I have the same issue now that I'm getting older. Um, how do you minimize the bags under your eyes? Is there any way to do it? And or is there is it OK for guys to do a little makeup if need be. Oh yeah, guys can do makeup. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do? Well, I don't know where where you're calling from, but it, the minute you can get back inside a high end department store, mm -hmm. what you want to do is you want to go to the makeup counter of a high end department store. Uh, what kind of complexion do you have? Is it are you Caucasian? Do you have dark skin? I think Mark, if it's the Mark, I think it is. He, he is Caucasian and has relatively light skin. 
relatively light skin. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what you want to do is, um, I'm just trying to think Mac is a good one. Uh, Bobby Brown is mm -hmm. a good one. Okay. So go to high end, like, uh, you know, Nordstrom or something like that. Go to the counter and ask them to help you find an under eye concealer. Mm. They usually come in a little tube. And then you're also going to ask if you can make an appointment with a makeup artist mm. because often they will do this for free because they want to sell you stuff. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're willing to make the appointment, go there, don't buy anything until the appointment because you'll feel better if this makeup artist helps you and you, mm -hmm. <laughs> you buy the stick from her then. So just say, I'd love to make an appointment with a makeup artist. She'll show you how you dab it on. And by the way, you want to dab. Mm -hmm. You don't want to smear like this because this skin here is very sensitive. Mm -hmm. So you want to put just a little bit on your finger and you want to dab like this until it's blended. And you want to dab until it's blended. Mm -hmm. And then if you want, you can get a powder, a dry powder that matches and then brush the dry powder over and then wipe everything down so there's not residual powder on your eyelashes and you'll be good to go. That's so awesome. high-end yeah. department store, mm -hmm. makeup powder, make an appointment and then buy the stuff after. And you'll buy two dry, if you dry can. concealer and dry powder. Yeah, that's all. That's I'm gonna try that because. And again, I don't have like when I was in a, a band in college, we wore makeup on stage. So I'm not. I don't have any hangouts with makeup uh, because yeah, and, and no one will know if you people, blend it in. People, you know, eighty, twenty, you know, eighty feet away from you aren't gonna notice that you have a little eyeliner on. It's just gonna help bring your eyes out. Oh, so. Blue. I'm all for that. Um, and the other problem that we have here on the East Coast in New Hampshire, I haven't seen the sun for about six months. So normally as I'm Italian and I'm olive skinned and usually I'm darker, but right now I'm like pasty. So I need to either get back out in the sun or uh, get a little makeup going. So. <laughs> oh, I, I vote for sun. Yeah. Although they do have bronzers. Mm. Like cool. powder bronzers, I, I don't. I don't think a liquid bronzer would be good, yeah. but I, I kind of like the the powdered right. bronzers. Yeah, this is awesome. Um, and people said they're signing up, which is great. This is such a huge value. Oh, great! I'm so valuable. excited to see your video. Awesome. To those and then who um, out. Steve asked if you can fix monotone. Do you talk about voice coach? Well, I know you do some of the coaching exercises and things like that, but yeah, the the best way to fix a monotone. Okay, so let me talk about monotone. Mm -hmm people hear your voice, the sound goes to your amygdala and the amygdala decides, am I going to send this information to the prefrontal cortex mm. to be remembered and stored? Or am I just going to ignore it? Okay. So in order for you to even get past the amygdala <laughs> when you're speaking is that people have to get an emotion from you. So if you say that if you are constantly talking in a monotone and you don't even vary the rhythm or pattern and you say to me, I would really love for you to sign up for my program because I think it's a great program and you're going to really benefit. <laughs> okay. You are not going to even remember what I said, much less take my call to action. Okay. I have so much going on right now. My husband's making bread with like, a. <laughs> if you hear all this stuff, it's because Oh my God. It's like, it looks like I'm in some glamorous place, but really I'm like in a hallway. Okay. I should show you guys that. Okay. So what you want to do to make sure that those words get remembered is that you have to have emotion. So if I say, I would really like you to buy my program, or if I say you, this is the program that you have to buy. You gotta buy this. Okay. Then you're going to get this sense like, Oh, I am having an emotional response. And then your brain remembers. So the reason you want to have a lot of different notes in your voice, more than one, not monotone, mm -hmm. is that when you have melody and you mix it with volume, it comes off as enthusiasm and people's brains will say to themselves, I need to pay attention to this. Mm -hmm. So if you talk like this and you talk in a monotone and then suddenly you're speaking in a monotone, <laughs> but you're speaking much louder in that monotone, <laughs> then it sounds like you're angry. But if you teach, talk louder and it goes up and down and you know what? I decided that I am not going to speak in a monotone anymore because it's just not the way to go if I want people to remember what I'm talking about. <laughs> you don't sound like you're angry anymore. You sound like you're excited. So the gold standard is melody, lots of notes and volume. And there is a sea of monotony. Most people only use four tones or less. Mm. 
when they speak. So how you're going to get more tones in your voice is you're going to yeah. grab a book, any book, and you're going to open it up and you're going to put a timer for one mm -hmm. minute and you're going to record yourself. And so you put the timer, you hit record and you say, touch base and deliver to the lights camera ladies contacts and then follow up and get women and minority certified this is my to-do list oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> i have to get women and minority certified okay create that google doc for me see with the stories from the yara golden and captivate with voice i don't even know what that means mm -hmm. and then offer a free lunch and learn to corporations oh my god i have so much to do okay <laughs> but the point is then you hit when the timer is up 